Molly Hunters in Jerusalem for us this morning. Molly, good morning. What is the latest? Savannah, good morning. We are learning new details about that daring rescue. Now, the Israeli military says at 1.49 a.m. overnight, Israeli troops entered a building in Rachel, telling NBC News that a new deal is, quote, pretty much there, but gaps remain. Savannah? Well, if a deal is imminent and pretty much there, does any of what happened overnight impact negotiations? Absolutely. And I think what we're trying to figure out, of course, in the next couple of days is how big, how significant those gaps may be. We do know that President Biden spoke with Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu their policy or change their military funding towards Israel. Savannah? Molly Hunter in Jerusalem. Thank you very much. We are. Hunter joins us now from Jerusalem. Molly, it is good to see you. So we are told that these two hostages are Israeli, that they're in good condition. What more do we know? And where do things stand right now with the negotiations for the remaining hostages? Hey guys, good to be with you both. And we're getting more details from the Israeli military about this daring overnight hostage rescue. And I do just want to give a little bit more context to Rafa, the southernmost city, as Morgan said, where more than a million, 1.4 million Palestinians are sheltering. But not only just sheltering, they were told to go there by the Israeli military because they were told that that area would be safe. But what we know about this specific rescue, two uh, older men, both Israeli hostages, 1.49 a.m. last night, Israeli troops uh, broke into a building in Rafa. It was a severe... You can hear it in her voice. She's overwhelmed, but you've got two very happy Israeli families tonight, but a lot, more than 100 hostages remain inside Gaza. So I think the question that we've been trying to parse through today is whether this kind of victory, whether this rescue operation for Netanyahu makes him more likely, more comfortable to make a deal, or whether it emboldens him uh, to walk away or hold out for something else, guys. Yeah, Molly, that's why I really appreciate the context you gave at the beginning, uh, sort of laying the scene for us here, because multiple sources tell NBC News right now that President Biden is getting pretty frustrated with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and has been criticizing him privately. Uh, Molly, what did he say, uh, but also what's the threshold? Hold for moving this private criticism to public policy change. Do we think there's going to be a change because of this private feeling? It's been really interesting, Morgan, watching in the last couple of days, listening to Secretary of State Blinken last week, then Biden last night in the readout that we got from the White House about the call between Prime Minister Netanyahu and President Biden. You heard this, this public criticism a little bit more uh, louder, a little bit harsher, and it's specifically around this uh, policy.